frustrate You are the only one worthy of praise I stand before you with an attentive heart Erase my sins from the present and past To you I pray, bow down prostrate You are the only one worthy of praise I stand before you with an attentive heart Erase my sins Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam Ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Amma ba'd Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Lessons from the Quran. In this series, insha'Allah ta'ala, what we're trying to achieve with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just to open our minds a little bit to the lessons found within the Quran. Because insha'Allah ta'ala, the brothers and sisters who are watching at home are people who are reading the Qur'an insha'Allah to a greater or to a lesser extent. What we want to do with this series insha'Allah ta'ala is to open your mind a little bit towards putting the Qur'an into practice. Putting the Qur'an into practice. Not just reading and letting the ayat go over your head summan wa umyana as though you are people who are deaf and blind but to actually put the ayat into practice to actually start to achieve an effort to move towards what Aisha radiallahu anha described when she spoke about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an his manners were the Qur'an living the Qur'an and putting the Qur'an into practice what I've chosen to talk to you about today is the first part in a two-part explanation of the advice of Luqman to his son. The advice of Luqman the wise to his son. And the scholars of Islam, they say that Luqman السلام, was not a prophet, but he was a man who Allah Azza wa Jal had given a great deal of wisdom. And look at this beautiful advice that he gives to his son. Let's listen to the first part of it, insha'Allah ta'ala, and then we can proceed from there. So after saying, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرْ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِابْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِظُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ أَنِ اشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ إِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرِ وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبَهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ إِلَيَّ مَرْجِعُكُمْ فَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ The advice of Luqman the wise. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ We gave Luqman al-hikmah, wisdom and understanding. And whoever Allah Azza wa Jal gives hikmah, وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا The one who Allah Azza wa Jal gives hikmah to, 
has been given a great amount of good, a large amount of good. Look at the wisdom that was given to Luqman. And why does Allah Azza wa Jal bless one of us with wisdom? Anishkur lillah. That you give thanks to Allah. In reality, brothers and sisters, this whole religion of Islam is built upon a sabr wa shukr. Being patient at times of adversity and being thankful at times of ease. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, How wonderful is the situation of the believer, and this is only for the believer. If Allah Azza wa Jal tests him with harm, he is patient, and Allah rewards him for that. If Allah tests him with ease, he is thankful, and Allah rewards him for that. The reward is there, whatever your situation is. Now, every single one of you watching this at home is going to be in one of two situations. Either you're going to be in a situation of ease or a situation of difficulty. And the reality is that most of us will be in a mix. It's very rare that someone is in a situation of pure difficulty and someone else is in a situation of pure ease. If something is easy for them, something else is difficult. But whatever issue in your life you think about, you're either going to be in a situation of ease or a situation of difficulty. If you're in a situation of ease, or if you're thinking about a particular aspect of your life, financial situation, your health, your children or your family situation, and if you're in a situation of ease in that thing you're thinking about, then you must be thankful to Allah. And being thankful to Allah means to make the best of what Allah Azza wa Jal has given you and to use it to seek what is with Allah Azza wa Jal in the Akhirah. So you're not being thankful to Allah for your wealth if you're not using that wealth to obey Allah and to avoid disobeying Allah. And you're not being thankful to Allah for your children if you're bringing them up upon manners which are un-Islamic and in a way which is un-Islamic. And you're not being thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal for your health if you're using it to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at yourself and you find another situation, you find hardship and difficulty, you have a trial in your children, or a trial in your family, a trial in your life, or a trial in your wealth, a trial in your health, then it's time for patience. And that's why a believer is between a sabr wa shukr, between patience and gratitude. In this, I would highly recommend everyone who has the availability to get the book Patience and Gratitude, or the summary of the book Patience and Gratitude by Al Imam Ibn Qayyim. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And it's been summarized into English with the title Patience and Gratitude. And that will give you a really beautiful understanding of the depth of the need for patience and gratitude in Islam. But that wisdom that was given to Luqman was a blessing. And like every blessing, it has to be repaid by thanks to Allah. As for the one who is thankful to Allah, who is the one who benefits? Does Allah Azza wa Jal benefit from you being thankful to Him? Does Allah Azza wa Jal benefit from you worshipping Him? No. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala doesn't benefit from your thanks to Him and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala doesn't benefit from your worship of Him. He is Al-Ghani, the one who is free of all needs. yashkur fa yashkuru li nafsi. The one who is thankful, he's only thankful for his own self. When you worship Allah, the one who benefits is you. And that's why I've heard some atheists say to me in the past, turn and say, why does your God need to be worshipped? And I say, our God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not need to be worshipped. He deserves to be worshipped. He doesn't need to be worshipped. Allah is al-Ghani, al-Hamid, as is mentioned in the ayah. وَمَنْ ضَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Whoever turns away from thanking Allah and is misguided by not thanking Allah for what He's given him, then Allah is al-ghani. Allah is ghaniyun hamid. Allah Azza wa Jal does not need our worship. He does not need us. Allah Azza wa Jal has kibriya, has pride. And He's the only one who is deserving of it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation worship Him because He is deserving of that worship, not because He needs that worship. 
If every one of his creation were to disbelieve, it wouldn't harm Allah Azza wa in anything. But when you believe, it only benefits you. And that's from the mercy of Allah Azza wa that he has decreed that you worship him to benefit yourselves, not to benefit him subhanahu wa ta'ala, but in recognition of his right to be worshipped. Whoever thanks or whoever shows gratitude, he only does so for his own self. Whoever disbelieves, then Allah Azza wa Jal is Ghaniyun Hamid. What does it mean, Waman Kafar? What does the word Kafara mean in the ayah? It means either the Kufr, which is leaving the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal and submitting to Him, but in this context, more likely, the Kufr of turning away from the blessings of Allah of rejecting the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's with that that I will leave you until the second half of the episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back brothers and sisters to the second half of this episode. We're looking at the beginning or the first part of the advice of Luqman to his son. And when Luqman said to his son in giving advice to him and advising him, admonishing him, O oh my son, do not make a partner with Allah. Indeed, making a partner with Allah is the worst form of oppression. Brothers and sisters, in this, the practical element is look at the advice of Luqman to his son. Look at the tarbiyah, the bringing up of Luqman, his son, upon Tawheed. The greatest thing that you can teach your children is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and not to make any partner with him subhanahu wa ta'ala in his worship. Look at the advice of Luqman. Look at the fact that he is taking time to advise his son, to teach his son about Islam. This is how we have to be with our children. And then he gives him the greatest advice first. He begins with the most important thing first. Ya bunayya la tushrik billah inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Oh my son, do not make a partner with Allah. Indeed, making a partner with Allah is a severe form of oppression. And it's the worst form of oppression. Because oppression, brothers and sisters, of three types. The first is an oppression that Allah will never forgive. And that is making a partner with Allah. Giving something that belongs to Allah to someone or something else. The second is an oppression that Allah will never overlook. And that is the oppression that a person does to his fellow human beings. Allah is not going to let it go. Allah will take you to account for it until that person forgives you or until your deeds are balanced out and the fairness is established, the justice is established. And a kind of oppression that Allah both forgives and overlooks and that is the oppression that we do against ourselves. So the first thing we need to advise our children is regarding the oppression of shirk. Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Al-An'am, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Those who believe and don't mix up their belief with oppression, it is those who will be safe in this dunya from the trials of Allah, in the akhirah, from the punishment of Allah, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ And those are the guided. Subhanallah, the Sahaba began to be very, 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 they were very upset. They were struck by the ayah. They said, which of us doesn't oppress himself? I, which of us doesn't sin? How are we going to be safe from the punishment of Allah? Which of us really don't sin? Which one of us doesn't sin? The Prophet ﷺ said, it's not as you have understood it. Or it's not as you have imagined it to be. It's as Luqman said to his son, Ya Bunayya la tushrik billah, inna shirka la dhulmun azim. The dhulm mentioned in the ayah in Surah Al-An'am, that if you avoid it, you will have safety and guidance from Allah is shirk. And shirk is for you to give the rights of Allah to someone or something else. So for example, if you make dua to other than Allah, dua is the sole right of Allah. And if you make dua to other than Allah for any reason, whether it is wasila or whether it is coming close or whether it is taqarrub, a means of nearness or whether it's shafa'a, seeking intercession. You made a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the rights of Allah azza wa jal are his names and attributes that they believed in and given and applied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and that we affirm what Allah affirmed for himself and we affirm what his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam affirmed for him and that we deny or negate what Allah negated for himself and we negate what the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam negated for him so from the essence of this is that we don't give those names and attributes to other than Allah and we don't deny them and we don't take them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the essence of this is that when we pray, we pray to Allah. When we sacrifice, we sacrifice to Allah. We don't sacrifice to anyone other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Our life and our death is for Allah. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ له. Say my prayer and my sacrifice and my living and my dying are for Allah, Lord of the worlds. No partner has He. No partner has He. This is the essence of Islam, the core of Islam that you worship Allah alone, you don't make a partner with Allah. And that's why it's the first advice that Luqman gives to his son. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about our relationship with our parents. And Allah azza wa jal says, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانِ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا And we have commanded man to be dutiful to his parents. How many times does the right of Allah and the right of the parents come together? How many times does Allah's right and the right of the parents come together? In the Quran, in the Sunnah of the Prophet The right of the parents, brothers and sisters, is huge. Muslim, non-Muslim, and we're going to hear about that in a moment. His mother carried him in hardship upon hardship. The pregnancy was hard. The labor was even harder. And his weaning takes place over two years. That you may give thanks to me, thanks to Allah and to your parents. And to me is your final destination. Thanks goes to Allah first and the gratitude is first to Allah. And if there is any human being after the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that deserves our love and deserves our gratitude, our parents we are negligent brothers and sisters with regard to our parents and we need to rectify this situation before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us to account for it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his right and then immediately the parents right his right is you don't make any partner with him the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was riding with Mu'adh on a donkey he said Ya Mu'adh atadri ma haqqullahi ala al-ibad وَمَا حَقُّ الْعِبَادِ عَلَى اللَّهِ Do you know what the right of Allah is over his slaves? And the right of the slaves is over Allah. Mu'ad said, قُلْتُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمُ Allah and his messenger know best. The Prophet ﷺ said, حَقُّ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعِبَادِ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا That they worship him and they don't make any partner with him. And the right of the slaves over Allah is that Allah will not punish the one who doesn't make any partner with him. Mu'adh said to the Prophet sallallahu Shall I not go and give the people the glad tidings? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, La Don't give them the glad tidings in case they start to rely on it and they stop doing good deeds. The right of Allah. And immediately after the right of Allah, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ The right of the parents. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah and don't make any partner with Him and be good to your parents. Even in the matters of the difficulties that were experienced by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his need for people to fight in the army. A man came to volunteer for the army and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in need of volunteers for the army. And he went and he sought the permission of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned to the man and said, are your parents alive? He said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَفِيهِمَا فَجَاهِدْ Go and instead of fighting with the army, go and serve your parents and strive to serve your parents. The right of the parents is huge. But it doesn't go over the right of Allah, brothers and sisters. It doesn't go beyond the right of Allah azza wa jal. And that's why in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains. 
after having commanded us to show our gratitude to Allah and to show our gratitude to our parents. Our parents who looked after us when we were small. وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا And say, oh my Lord, have mercy on the two of them as they looked after me when I was small. The fisal, the weaning period, waking up all the way through the night and feeding and cleaning and changing the nappy that you may show gratitude to Allah and to your parents. But if those parents command you to make a partner with Allah in that which you have no knowledge, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Do not obey them. لا طَاعَتَ لِمَخْلُوقٍ فِي مَعْصِيَةِ الْخَالِقِ It's not permissible for you to obey any of the creation of Allah in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must listen to your parents, you must obey your parents. But if your parents to tell you to do something which is making a partner with Allah, or they tell you to drink alcohol or commit zina, or to do haram, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Do not obey them. وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا And treat them in this world in the best way. Accompany them. This is when they tell you to do the greatest sin. So what about when they tell you to do a sin less than that? Be kind in how you speak with them. Be good in how you talk with them. Accompany them even when they say, make a partner with Allah. The mother of Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhuma, may Allah be pleased with them both because she became Muslim. She used to curse the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How bad is it? She used to speak evil of the Messenger of Allah. And Abu Huraira became so upset one day that he came to the Messenger of Allah and he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, make dua that Allah guides the mother of Abu Huraira. And the Prophet Sallallahu made dua. After Abu Huraira had tried and tried and tried, the companions didn't used to come for dua in the first instance and then just sit down. They tried and tried and tried. And he came and he said, make dua for my mother. The Prophet Sallallahu asked Allah to guide the mother of Abu Huraira. And when he came back to his mother, he heard the sound of the water running and the sound of the ghusl. And she came out and she said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah I bear witness there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is the Messenger of Allah. He accompanied her in good even though she used to curse the Prophet وسلم, and she used to say bad things about the Prophet SubhanAllah, we must be good to our parents. So many times our parents have got the wrong idea about something, either in the issue of Islam and Kufr, they've chosen another religion, or in the issue of innovations and bid'ah. But we must be good to them and kind to them and try to encourage them to the truth like they looked after us when we were small and we follow the path of the one who turns to Allah in remembrance and to Allah will be our return and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inform us about what we used to do. That's all we have time for in this episode and in the next episode we'll continue with the advice of Luqman. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. From the present and past To you I pray Bow down prostrate You are the only one Worthy of praise I stand before you with an attentive heart